is up guys welcome to today's video hope you guys are all having a great weekend so far it's currently sunday morning currently nine in the morning right now today's video is a very exciting one i know you guys are excited to see some of these numbers as well because i've been getting a lot of questions uh, about this on my instagram and even on my TikTok as well which you guys should be following me on both of those if you guys want to stay up to date almost daily today's video is going to be talking about how my first week as an Airbnb host has gone. I'm gonna break down the next three months and what they're looking like for my uh, short-term rental here in Chandler, Arizona. I listed it nine days ago as of today, and I've had more traction than I could ever really just imagine. It's gone so incredibly well so far. I've only actually had two bookings in the last nine days, but uh, the next three months are pretty much fully booked out, I would say. Uh, there's like some dates here and there that aren't booked out during the middle of the week, but uh, most of my weekends are booked out. There's so much that I'm learning as well as a new host, like every single day. <clears throat> I'm learning the do's and don'ts, some things to look for, um, some things to avoid. Uh, a lot of it too is just figuring out what my nightly or my ADR or my average daily rate is for a listing. One thing I do want to disclaim before I get started is I do live in Arizona. The winter months, February, March, April, and sometimes May, I've heard, those are the money-making months. So I kind of got started at a really good time. So some of these numbers are not going to last through the entire year. It's very, very seasonal here. And uh, I've heard almost in the summer times, you just almost break even. You make a little bit of money on Airbnbs or short-term rentals and you make all your money in these three to four months. It would be incredible if these numbers stayed throughout the entire year. It would blow my projected profit out of the water. But here we go. Let's shrink myself. You guys like the mustache, by the way. I have to shave it tomorrow, unfortunately. Um, we are gonna start with kind of just some listing photos, honestly, because I don't know if you guys have actually seen any of the photos that my guy took. Uh, my, Michael, he took all these photos for me. so. Here's what the house looks like. You guys won't be able to get, I mean, I'm still kind of in the way here. Let me go like this, maybe that's a little better. Um, so my hero shot, or the shot that people see when they look at my Airbnb, I originally had it as, um, let me see, I had it with a pool shot. I don't know where that pool, I had this shot originally. And it was cool, I mean, it shows that I have a pool obviously, but um, what I changed it to, was this shot. So this is like the hero shot, the first thing that people see. Be I did this because I already have pool in my title, so I don't think like they need to see the pool as the first image because I think the living room or this just the setup of this entire house is the selling point. So I was like, luxurious three bedroom house with heated pool in the title. So uh, instead of adding a pool shot as the first shot they see, I added the living room because I think it's I got a selling point for sure. And I've been getting a lot of traction because of that. Um, I was still getting a lot of traction with the, with the pool as the first shot, but I did change that. So here are some images. Dun, dun, dun. Let's just bust through these real quick. That's a primary bathroom right there. I don't know. I don't know why I added those in. I forgot to take them out. I took a picture of a park as well because this is right behind my Airbnb. So I think it could be a selling point for people that have kids, especially in the summertime when it warms up a little bit. One thing I do want to note is I had about 20 inquiries of people asking me if my pool was heated. So I lost about $25,000 worth of inquiries. Not that every single one of those people would have booked that asked me questions, but even if a quarter of those booked, that would have been about, I don't know, six, $7,000 of potential bookings that I had. So the first thing I did basically after I got it listed was spend $8,000 and I got a heat pump installed into the pool. So it's now sitting at a cozy 85 degrees. Uh, ever since then though, I added that heated heated pool into my title. I've gotten on quite a bit more bookings as well. So I think it is necessary, especially in the winter months. Like people are coming out here to enjoy what they don't have in the state they're coming from. I have a lot of Chicago, Minnesota, Seattle, Washington, these colder states that wanna come out here and enjoy the pool, enjoy the sun. So for me not to have it heated just really didn't make sense. It's like I'm I'm promoting a pool but you can't really swim in the pool because it's 56 degrees right now. So uh, it made sense to me. I did not want to spend another $8,000 because that brought my total out of pocket on this property to $207,000 so far spent or so far invested. Um, so now that that's out of the way, let's actually break down the numbers. This is why you guys are watching this video. Um, here is the chart for February. So I listed this January 30th, so I didn't really have a whole lot of time. Um, my first booking was actually January 31st. 
and this is what February is looking like. I still do have a little bit of open dates here, as you guys can see. Uh, I would say it's about 60% occupied, I wanna say. The next slide you guys will see, uh, it'll actually show you. So here you go. And then the actual earnings, potential earnings for February. I, I don't wanna say earnings because I actually haven't been paid out. The only paid out I've been is 689 from the booking that someone's leaving today. Um, but booked, booked earnings for February is $8,849. This is after Airbnb's fee. So this is actually my projected take home if everyone follows through with these bookings and no one cancels. So here we go. That's the potential earnings. I wanna show you guys down here. Um, sorry, it's kind of, I'll try to zoom in right now actually. Um, so nights booked to 10, unbooked nights 18, occupancy rate is 36%, so I, act, I guess it's a little bit lower. Um, and then I do have cleaning fees. My cleaning fees are actually, I'm actually paying some to my actual cleaners because the cleaning fees that I charge my guests are not actually covering how much it costs. I will likely change that. I, like I said, I'm still learning the prices and all that. I didn't know if people were gonna book if I had a $225 cleaning fee. I don't think it's gonna change much though. I've been messing with my nightly price as well, anywhere from $240 to $500 a night, depending on what part of the week it is. The weekends are obviously more expensive. Um, and then it also, I'm, I have a third party plugin that kind of determines my, my uh, ADR, my average daily rate. And I think it does a pretty good job. It takes into consideration um, events in the area like Barrett Jackson, for example, this week, we have the waste management open next week, which shot my prices up to $508 a night because of that. So there's things that I would never pay attention to that I don't want to have to pay attention to. I have more important things to do than try to figure out what events are going on in the area. This part, this plugin takes 1% of overall bookings, um, but it does a pretty good job so far. Um, <clears throat> I would say it's kind of been a rough experience with March and April because I think it honestly dropped my prices down too low for those months and I'm almost fully booked out and I think I could have maximized a little bit better on these months. So um, I'm at 61% occupancy for the month of March and um, my average daily rate is anywhere from 248 to 441. Potential payout for this is $8,013. Now, I would have probably raised the rates a little bit to try to get those bookings a little bit higher. I think if, if this month gets booked out a little bit more, I think I can break the 10,000 mark. But like I said, these are the peak months. Once it's, it'll start slowing down, um, as you guys can see with uh, April, here's March's calendar real quick for you guys. So you guys can have a look. It's way more filled up than February was. We really only have like one weekday with a couple days here. I don't think anyone's gonna book like one night, but they might. Um, and then we have April right here, which is pretty much, I mean, it's occupancy rates 50%, so I still do have a chance to uh, get to the 8,000 mark, which would be really cool. Um, and then nights booked 15 out of 15, so it's literally exactly at 15%. Here is what it looks like right here. But like once you get to the occupancy rate like this, you start, like it's not gonna be much more because all the like really good nights are taken up. <clears throat> so you're gonna get these, which it doesn't make sense to me because this does not look like 50% occupancy rate. I have one, two, three, four, five. So I don't know where they're really pulling these numbers from because there's only five open days and it says it's 50% occupancy. So I have no idea um, what that really means. Yeah, that's really confusing. So yeah, I mean, it says 50%, but right here, it looks like my calendar is pretty much full. So if you guys are an Airbnb host, I'd love a little bit more information on that. Also, if you guys have any suggestions about anything, like what I should do, um, I've gotten suggestions about don't let people book more than six months out. So I did shrink my calendar to only allow people to book within the next six months. That allows me to have a little bit more control of specific events and stuff like that. Like I, we have the Super Bowl coming next year and I don't wanna have to worry about what I'm gonna price it out right now, so I only have six months out. So, uh, one of my, men, my mentor, Lenny, actually said, don't do one night events because that really intrigues people that wanna just have local parties that maybe live in the area. They don't wanna trash their house or they don't have a big enough house. They'll book it for one night, have a huge party. Um, so I'm probably gonna change that too to a minimum stay of two nights that usually, he says that usually uh, steers away from the locals having a party at your house, especially in the summertime when maybe they don't have a pool at their house so they'll book it out, get 20 people over, absolutely trash the place because they wanna have a pool or they wanna have, a, like I said, just an area to party. So right now I think my potential earnings 
with like all the months. I don't really have anything past May booked out right now. I think May is like 30% occupied, but the daily rate on that's like $200. So I really need to change that. I'm probably gonna do that after this. Um, so I'm not making a whole lot of money in that unless I change it. But I think I'm at like $26,000 in potential payout. Now we're gonna talk about kind of my break even point. My mortgage on this is $1,438. I estimate, depending on my electric bill, I really need to kind of figure it out. Um, with the new heat pump as well. I do have solar panels, so that should alleviate a lot of the electric bill. But they've been off and on. It's been a pain in the butt. I have Tesla solar panels, and I go look at it, and like one day it's just completely off and not working. So I really need to figure that out, especially when I have this place occupied, because that can change hundreds of dollars a month. Uh, I estimate about $2,000 to $2,100 a month is my break even. So if I'm doing $8,000 a month, uh, that's about five to $6,000 in profit. Um, but like I said, it'll slow down in the summertime, I assume. And then, then I have all my subscriptions. I have Hulu. Uh, I only have Hulu. I have my landscaper. I have my pool guy. Uh, I have a wine subscription that, I'm, that I just started up today that I'm paying $90 a month where I get six bottles. So every single time I get a new guest, I'm just going to throw a bottle in there. Um, and hopefully that'll work out as well. So I only have one review right now. Hopefully I can start building those reviews up as well. And hopefully, like my, my main goal here is not really to fill up than the current months. I wanna build up enough reviews right now to where I can hopefully get four to $5,000 a month in the summertime as well. So I'm really focused on kind of just building up my summer months right now and really try to maximize that. Because if I can make two to three K in the summer months and I can make six to seven K in the winter months, I would be extremely happy with that and I should uh, be able to get my money back in within the next three to four years on my $200,000 investment. So. That's it guys, hopefully this was able to help you guys out, motivate you if you guys are looking or on the fence about short-term rentals. It's different in every state. I know somewhere like Oregon pops off in the summertime, gets no bookings in the wintertime. So we're very seasonal here as well, which I think is a huge advantage specifically for Arizona short-term rentals. We're getting a ton of people from these colder climates just wanting to come hang out here. Uh, we also have looser uh, COVID restrictions than most of the other states as well so that's been a huge thing where people just kind of want to get out no closures right now so <clears throat> um yeah i'm very grateful for how things are taking off i just need to stay on top of it as a host as well like i said february is almost fully booked out i just need to make sure i don't i'm not the problem for a bad review i need to make sure i get my cleaners there on time i need to figure out the cleaning situation how many people i need because like for example today i have someone leaving at 11 a.m i have someone checking in at 3 p.m this lady's fairly new i need to make sure she does a good job restocks everything toilet paper dish soap um throws that bottle of wine out there for when they come in restores the coffee that and espresso cups and all that kind of stuff so it looks good when these guests come in um, I might. I have, a, I have a pretty busy morning. I'm going to actually tour a property with one of my investor clients. So hopefully I'll be able to stop by there prior to this guest coming in to make sure it's up to my standards, but um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to. <sighs> if things keep going like this way and I have like a lot going on, I, I actually may look into hiring an assistant as well, which I uh, am very on the fence about. I've never actually had someone work with me that I'm actually constantly paying. So it's something that I've been thinking about for the last four to five months if I really want to grow and scale things, not just in Airbnb, but just in my general real estate entrepreneurship with my current long-term rentals. Uh, with our flips that we have going on with my investor clients that I have as an actual real estate agent. And uh, I have something exciting to talk about. I don't wanna announce it right now. I'll probably talk about it in the next two weeks here until I really s see things set in stone on this. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow me on social media. If you guys are looking for a property here to either buy or sell in Arizona. I am a licensed real estate agent. I'd love to work with you guys. I'd love for you to give me a chance to work with you guys. Uh, emails down below, Instagram's down below, TikTok's down below. Be sure to drop a like, drop, drop a comment if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna answer every single comment.